Helena Martin. Uh, by day, I work uh, for an insurance syndicate in the city, uh, but I also own a martial arts gym. So uh, I'm getting more and more involved in that side of things, and hopefully one day that will that will take over full time. At the gym, I'm completely in charge of all the business side of things, so I'm taking everything that I experienced as a student and trying to turn it into something that you know I would love, so it's putting that back into the gym so that all the students can have the best possible experience. Uh, I coach as well, not, not too often. I mainly I focus on the women just because I think they have a slightly harder time of it and it's difficult for them to get the right trainers, so it's... Uh, so I put some time in kind of coaching them specifically. Uh, I started martial arts just for fitness about four and a half years ago. Uh, me and my sister came to a kickboxing class. Um, like I said, just for fitness, to do something a little bit new. I come from a dancing background originally. And then one thing led to another. I did a sparring session and it went well. And as it turned out, I was quite good at it. And I, I, I felt like I found my calling. Um, and so obviously, you know, I trained for a few years and then, and then I was mainly focusing on kickboxing. Uh, and I got heavily involved in the tournament scene. So I was doing a lot of British and European championships and I won a few of those. And then I went on to the world championships and I won two of those. Uh, so two world titles in kickboxing and then I decided to take a step in a slightly different direction so I looked towards mixed martial arts instead uh, and so I went over to the USA to train with Matt Hughes at the Hit Squad uh, so I was there for six months all in all uh, doing jiu-jitsu and wrestling and Thai boxing and boxing and and everything else and I was training with guys who you know now have, uh, have managed to make it into the UFC so that's a whole new, new experience. Uh, me and MMA has been <laughs> an up and down experience. Um, I think that I'd like to pride myself on the fact that I've given it a lot of time and I've taken it very seriously. So the fights that I have had, I think, have been a good demonstration of skill. I haven't won all of them. Uh, and you know I've come away from fights with hideous black eyes and and whatnot so it hasn't always gone my way but it's just I'd like to think that I'm I'm one of the people that are, are encouraging people to realize that women are just as capable in the cage as men are The women's MMA game is a really, really tough one. It's it, the fights, especially in the UK. In the US, it's a slightly different story, but in the UK, generally, you'll have one female MMA fight on a card at an MMA show. Generally, the majority of the ones that I've seen haven't been that good, and I don't think represent women's MMA in a very good light. And because that's the only fight that people have seen, that's the only experience they've got, and it kind of it just kind of reiterates this opinion that women shouldn't be in MMA because they're either hideous because one woman is a lot more experienced or they're just quite amateurish because neither of them are very experienced. And it, it's just highlighting this idea and the stereotype that women don't belong in a cage, women don't belong in martial arts whatsoever, but especially because MMA is seen as being so much more aggressive, a lot of people turn away from it. And there aren't enough women who are who are true athletes to change that opinion. And the main difference between doing kind of combat sports or point sparring and you know the tournaments and stuff and I'm not taking anything away from that because it's hard in its own right and I've gone back into some kickboxing tournaments and it's, it's difficult because it's just different to what you're used to. Uh, I mean the main one of the great things about kickboxing is that you can compete at a tournament on a Sunday and you can still go into work on a Monday and sit in a board meeting and, you know, no one's going to look at you funny. Uh, you know, in an MMA fight, generally, I have to book the week off after work, um, after the fight. Uh, 
because you know that you're going to sustain some kind of injury. Someone can't elbow you in the face without <laughs> people knowing about it. So it's just, it's a whole new realm of training and dedication and the hours that you have to put in are extreme if you want to be good at it. And it's kind of one of the issues with being a woman is it's a, it's a good and a bad thing. It's a smaller ladder to climb because there are less women that do it. So you can make a bigger splash earlier on in your career. But then because there are less women that can do it, there are, there are women who can make a name for themselves without actually being very good at it. So again, it's kind of the world's opinion of women's MMA is based on a lot of, a lot of kind of untruths. My work are quite supportive of what I do. Um, they, uh, they see me during weight cutting weeks and stuff, kind of chewing on seeds and things so I can cut away and they're all very intrigued and just don't really understand what's going on. But um, the majority of people think it's great and they see it as you know, a good part of my work ethic is being dedicated and committed and seeing things through. So that does actually cross over into the working life as well. Uh, so that for the most part it's all good, but um, when you come in with a black eye, they, uh, they don't see it, they forget <laughs> about the dedication, they're committed and the good work ethic and they just see you as a woman with a black eye. Um, so lots and lots of makeup and, uh, and again they are supportive and you know I've made it very clear that I'm not willing to give up what I do and they haven't, they haven't fired me yet. But, I can understand from their point of view, especially if you're client facing, it can produce a few problems. Uh, being an assertive, competitive woman in, in the world anyway, I think comes with issues. I think as soon as you throw a, a combat sport into it as well, it just, it's threefold. It's, it causes more bad <laughs> than it does good. I mean, there's a lot of people, everyone I train with, um, and I train with mostly men, they're very respectful. Uh, they don't treat me any differently. They support me and train with me and coach me, and I don't feel any different. But you kind of, you step outside of that, and it just, it doesn't compute with somebody. And men, as it turns out, have very fragile egos. And they kind of, they like the idea on paper, you know, a confident woman and someone who isn't going to get annoyed with them because they want to watch the boxing that night or, you know, maybe understands what it's like to, to bleed and sweat and everything else. But they want that person as, as a friend or their mate's really cool girlfriend. They kind of, they don't realise that being with that person is, um, I, it just, I guess they see it as a competition in some ways to themselves. You know, they're more than happy to be the aggressive athletic, I need to spend my time in the gym, but, you know, God forbid, I can't see you because you're in the gym. Um, so, yeah, it causes some problems. <laughs>